Hey guys, with the new Locked and Loaded update, everyone has a new camp slot to use, so I figured I might as well make my own official guide to making a camp just for you. In Fallout 76, you could literally place a camp anywhere, but with this guide, I'll show you what you should be looking for and how to make a camp that fits your needs. Before you start building a camp, it's important to know what you're looking for, and I've narrowed it down to three basic things you want to look for when thinking of a new camp slot. The big three things you want to look for when looking for a new camp is the type of region, the local resources, and what type of camp you want to make. There are six regions in Fallout 76, and going in order from lowest difficulty to highest, it goes from the forest, the toxic valley, the ash heaps, Savage Divide, the mire, and the cranberry bog. On the screen, you'll see a brief description that I've given of their location and generally what it looks like. So with following this tutorial, the area that I want to build in is the ash heaps. With more of the end game content, I've realized I've spent a lot of time in the ash heap and I've never built a camp there, so I will start there. Once you decide what region you're looking for, then you have to think about what resources you want to have around you. Since your camp can be placed anywhere, you could take advantage of the local resources. Those being water, mobs, resource nodes, loot spawns, event spawns, and player vending. The closer your camp is to the action, the less money you have to spend traveling every day. In all of my campsites, the thing I prioritize highest is a resource node. Just like workshops, you can find ore veins around the map and you can place your camp around it too. When you put your camp near an ore vein, you could put a collector on top of it. It is extremely helpful to have passive collection of resources so whenever you come back to your camp, you're still fully stocked. Based on where your camp is placed, that will determine what kind of player comes to your camp. If you're in a high level area, high level players will come to shop. If you're in a low level area, low level players will be scrounging around for whatever they can get. Same with the mobs or random enemies that can spawn around. If you're in the cranberry bog, expect to get attacked by scorch beasts all the time. If you're in the forest, expect rad roaches to be your friend. If you know the game well, you can put your camp around event spawns. Just remember not to put it too close to nuke drops or else your base might be ionized. Lastly, you gotta think about what type of camp you want to make. Are you going to be a lonesome player in the wastelands or are you going to start a brand new colony? It's all up to you. I typically try to build a camp that has a lot of utility for others and myself. I also enjoy having a faction theme to it, but I think for today, I'm just going to be building a house. I'll try my best to call out any interesting building tactics I remember, but most of this is just going to be me freeballing it. In the description, I've linked the map I'm going to be using, but this map just lets you narrow down what resources in the areas you like to look at. You can toggle on and off the resource nodes you want to see, and remember to toggle on the workshops so you can see where they are so you don't accidentally attempt to build a camp there. On the map here, I'll point out a couple high value places that pretty much everyone has built a camp in at least once. When you have your primary camp as a popular place, it's highly unlikely every time you log into the server you'll be able to place down your camp. So. I'd recommend having your first camp be somewhere that's not as popular, and your second camp you could be a little bit more daring with. As an example, I built my first camp up here in the forest. I chose a spot because there's a junk vein here, and it's right in the river so I can collect water. This base I stuck with a brotherhood theme, but my next base, like I said, is going to be just a house. Alright, let's open the map and see where we can go. Let's start by hiding all, and then let's toggle the resource nodes we want to see. Typically my go-to are acid and junk. Oh yeah, let's toggle on the workshops just so we don't accidentally go to one. Bottom left, the ash heap is looking pretty good for me, but let's show you some popular spots that people like to go to. There's only about five overlapping nodes, and you can guarantee any of those are going to be populated by someone when you log in. Like this one in the bottom middle of the map. If you can get it, you could build a cool tower here, but it's hard to get, so I won't be building there today. Up here in the top middle, there's a junk and lead spawn that you could put a camp in the middle of. Like I said though, this is probably not going to be too common to get. This probably isn't the exact spot, but somewhere over here, there's a lead and gold spawn. This is also pretty popular too, but I'm not too interested. Alright, let's start from the bottom and work our way up. just a little walk, we've seemed to have found it. Unfortunately, I don't really like the NPCs spawn here, and I don't really like the area. It's not big enough for me, and it doesn't give me enough room to move around. We'll leave this bum here and go to the next spot.
Took me a moment to find it, but it's kind of off the path. This area seems really cozy. I guess this is going to be the spot. Almost forgot. Just remember to select the new camp slot instead of your primary one. Almost just deleted my main base. First things first, place down your foundations. No point in starting with decorations if your foundations ultimately don't work in the area you're trying to build in. For the rest of this video, I'll speed up me building and I'll slow down for anything important. Hopefully the follow-up music in the background will keep you serenaded. Also, like I said, I'm not the best builder, this is just how I do it. Alright, let's start with some walls and see how it looks. Not too bad, let's put some stairs up here so we can see how the floors look on the roof. In this, I'm going to try and build a sky bridge between the two main structures. The first tower, or part of the building, is going to be the trading depot. It's where people can come in, fix their armor, and also buy some of my wares. And then the rest of the building, I'm just going to throw in everything else. The second tower, I'm going to try and make it a little bit more homely, but, you know, I'm not the best at building, so let's just throw those together. I like to double stack these stairs so you can have a comfortable flight of stairs to go up and down. Alright, let's shape this up a little bit, throw some walls on it, and see how it looks. This is looking pretty good so far, let's throw a roof on and see how that is. Oh, looks like I've hit the top of the build area. If you didn't know, depending on where you put your workbench, that determines the area around your camp and also the height of it. To get around this, we're going to turn it into half walls and put a roof on top of that. Don't ask me why, but that doesn't count as a second floor. It just counts as part of the first floor. Alright, the shape of it's looking pretty good. Let's throw some textures on it. The trading tower, I'm going to keep into a metal kind of look, and the homely tower, I'm going to keep with concrete and wood.
Man, doesn't that look pretty? Alright, let's next go into decorations inside and out. I like to start with the power, because most things that are fun require it. Let's take advantage of this really annoying tree and use it to connect the rest of the house to each other. I like to hide my wires, so if I can hang it under anything or attach it to the walls directly and not have it going out too far, I typically do that. I'm going to have the power grid split right here, so I can have my vendor on a switch, and have the main gate for the vendor on a switch too. This way I can close up shop just in case any new annoying exploits come out and I need to close my shop immediately. If you didn't know, you could put wires through a door, and then change the door to a wall, or a window. This way, you can have wires clipped to wherever you need them, you don't have to work around with those stupid annoying connectors. Alright, let's throw some stuff in here. Alright, that's good enough for over there. Let's try to build a little porch. I think Protectron's walking around is one of the most annoying things in this game, so I'm going to stuff him in a corner so he can't leave. Let's go back to putting some wallpapers up.
Can't have a camp without monkeys. You gotta put them in a cage too. I thought it'd be easy just to slap some lights in there, but this cage is really stupid, so I'll just give them some candles and get the spooky vibe going. Messing with those lights outside, maybe we want to put some lights inside, so let's throw some light into the dark. I'll keep this room nice and dingy for Sophia. She's kind of annoying, so I'll give her a disgusting room. Right next to the generator too. She'll never sleep. This blue room's gonna be a nice kind of cozy hangout. And this yellow room, or kind of beige room, is going to be like the dining area. At this point, I have no idea what to do with the teal floor, so I'm just going to throw things on the wall and put some things on the floor too. Maybe this will be like a flex room or something, show off all my cool stuff. Alright, that's about all I could fit in here, so 
Let's give a little tour. Alright, that's my camp. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. Also, if you saw all the Easter eggs, leave a comment down below their locations. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, leave a like. If there's anything else you want me to cover, leave a comment down below too. Thanks for watching.